Hello. How are you? I feel very well today, thank you. Oh, good. I'm so glad. This is your first time here, and I'm, I'm happy to have you here. I'm very honored to be here in this chair. Oh, really? Yeah, I really like it. Oh, good. You can come sit in this chair anytime you want. Thank you. Do you think there will be times when it's impractical? It, if Say someone's in it? For example. Yes. Um, it depends on who's in it. They may uh, enjoy you sitting on their lap. It may lift the interview. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they could be here, and then suddenly I'll be perched on their lap. They'll have to crane round you, but it may induce a kind of sexual energy, perhaps. Let's try it someday. Any of your guests, you can select one at random from a hat, and then I'll just come and perch on their knees, or, if we feel very adventurous, further along towards the groin. <laughs> a lot of people are volunteering already. Oh, there are some volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's engaged. He can't do that. Yes. Not, not now, anyway. The conditions of an engagement prohibit that kind of midriff activity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's talk about... Uh, I can't imagine uh, 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 knowing you when you were on different types of drugs, because you really do have... <laughs> I mean... Like, look at you. You don't need anything. You're very entertaining, and you, you, you know, but I can't imagine, did that... Because he was... He, well, you talk about it in, in the first book. You were addicted to basically everything, right? Everything. Was there anything you weren't addicted to? Like, say vitamin C, I barely ever had any. <laughs> no vitamin <clears throat> C? Heart, scarcely, unless inadvertently someone put into some heroin. Uh-huh. <laughs> Which is... Uh, need, I, I needn't stress that heroin is very, very bad. I know that from experience right. now. Right. Very, very... You were, you were addicted literally to everything. Yes. I became addicted to heroin, crack cocaine, uh, the cocaine without the, the washing it up to make it into crack, uh, amphetamines, marijuana, alcohol, moving about, looking out of windows, this position. <laughs> all of those things. <laughs> I, I couldn't stop myself, Ellen. And... And uh, we should say it's been eight years. You, you're sober now, eight years? Is I've had no been... drugs for eight years. Eight years. <laughs> They're very happy for you. Oh, dude, dude. So what, what I like is that, that you have in the, your Bookie Book 2, which I love the names, the first Bookie Book and Bookie Book 2, um, <laughs> I think you send a good message to, to, you know, everyone thinks that fame is going to be the answer. And, and you have a really good message for teens for fame and for what they think that's going to do for them. Yes, because when I was growing up, I thought I'd be a lot happier if I was famous and successful and if I had money. And I think that's because we live in a culture that celebrates fame and commerce and consumerism and money, so that if you don't have those things, you feel like you're not enough. And I think we live in a culture that makes you think, oh, I'm a little bit too fat or I'm too thin or I'm not right and I don't fit in. And I think, like, you know, increasingly I've realised as I've tried to change and tried to adapt and amend and pursue these ambitions that ultimately everybody has a beauty within themselves and if you find this and accept this then you will be happy regardless of external attributes or material things. Just simply put.